Next question to Brother Imran from Sister's Mic. Assalamu alaikum. I'm a doctor by profession. My question to Brother Imran is that in recent times, since some ignorant made the cartoons of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to which many Muslims reacted throughout the world and in many places violently. So, what is the teaching of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for those who blaspheme? Sister has asked a question that recently cartoons of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were published in a Danish newspaper and then there was a worldwide protest from the Muslim community. So she would like to learn what is the teaching of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam concerning this issue, concerning the blasphemy against Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sister is actually referring to the Jyllands Posten newspaper of Denmark that published the cartoon on the 30th of September 2005 and then there was big protests throughout the world. What does Prophet say about blaspheming against Prophet? Islam is very clear on this issue, sister. If you read Surah Anam, Surah number 6, and number 108, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded, do not revile the gods of other religions. Do not say bad things about the gods of other religions. For in ignorance, they might abuse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Action and reaction might take place. So do not abuse the gods of other religions. Meaning, Islam is very sensitive in this issue. What does Allah say about blasphemy against Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Surah Maida, Surah number 5, Ayah number 33. Allah said, Whosoever blasphemes and revolts against Allah and Muhammad Rasulullah, send him away in exile or crucify him. Punishment of crucifixion is mentioned in the Quran. Surah Maida, Surah number 5, Ayah number 33. Or crucify him or cut off his limbs from the opposite sides. Right hand, left leg. Or the ruler of the time can even give him capital punishment. It looks very cruel to the people. How can this be? I am asking, it's a natural reaction. What will you do if somebody abuses your own mother and your own sister? You react. How can somebody dare react against Allah and Muhammad in that way? Making cartoons, you see, they are at a little profitable side or at a little, little better side than the Muslims in this issue. Why? We Muslims, no Muslim is a Muslim. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, my peace be upon him. It's an article of faith for every Muslim to believe in Jesus Christ, my peace be upon him. We Muslims, we believe. We are the only non-Christian community on the face of the earth which believes in Jesus Christ, my peace be upon him. We Muslims, we believe that Jesus was born miraculously without any male inter intervention, which many modern day Christians do not believe. We believe that he healed those who were born blind and lepers, but by Allah's permission. We believe that he gave life to the dead, but by Allah's permission. We respect and believe Jesus. So we cannot make a cartoon of Jesus. Leave aside making a cartoon of Jesus. The Prophet ﷺ said in Sayyid Bukhari volume number 9, Hadith number 646, that anybody who makes pictures, on the day of judgment, Allah will say, put the soul in the picture you have made. Unless you do not put the soul in it, you cannot enter the heaven. So we cannot make the picture of the shaitan also. You know, Alhamdulillah, might be, some people might disagree with me, but I spoke to a few people who made cartoons of President Bush. I said, Islam doesn't permit this. Islam doesn't allow the Muslims to make cartoons of Mr. Bush or Mr. Shaitan. Even if Mr. Bush, even if Mr. Bush is the Carniopagus twin. You know what is a Carniopagus twin? Carniopagus twin, sir will tell me, he's a medical expert. Twins, jodwa, jodwa peda hote na, they are joined from the head. Even if Mr. Bush is the Carniopagus twin of Iblis, yet we cannot make a cartoon. Islam says you cannot make a cartoon of Mr. Bush. Islam doesn't permit. What does the Prophet ﷺ do? At the time of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, there were pagans, there were disbelievers in Prophet Muhammad ﷺ who abused him. We Muslims are very emotional, you know. We came out on the roads, we threw stones, we burnt. You see, the media highlighted this issue. You see, the Muslims are reacting. And those who wanted the Muslims to react like this, we Muslims, by reacting on the roads that way, we became a barrier for several non-Muslims to understand the right teachings of Islam. They thought that the Muslims are doing this because the Prophet told them that if somebody speaks against me, go on the road, pelt a stone, burn the buses. The non-Muslims 
took a wrong image of it. I said, if they have blasphemed, ask them to call them for a debate. Challenge them for a debate. Come on, man, prove that Prophet Muhammad is not the best of all the mankind. Prove, I am ready to have a debate. I will organize it. If you can prove that he was not the best beneficent to the mankind. Let's have a dialogue. Let's have a discussion. I can prove that Prophet Muhammad wasallam is the best. Not because I say so. Because your Bible says so. The Bible says about Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Swamiji gave a suggestion to Dr. Anthony Raj to read the Gospels in Greek and Hebrew. I would like to quote in Hebrew from Songs of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16, it says, Hikko mamitakim likullo muhammadim. The name of Prophet is there in the Bible. <laughs> and you ask, and you ask, any person who knows Hebrew language, when do you add I am to any word? Eloh, when you read the Bible, it says Elohim. Ask any Christian, ask any Jew, why do you call Elohim? Why not Eloh? He says, we respect the name Elah by adding I am to it. In Songs of Solomon, the name of Muhammad is given as Muhammadim with respect. Not only that, the Prophet ﷺ has been prophesied in the Hindu scriptures. Not in one or two places, several places. In Rig Veda, book number 1, hymn number 13, verse number 3. Rig Veda, book number 1, hymn number 18, verse number 9. Rig Veda, Book number 1, hymn number 106, verse number 4. Rig Veda, book number 1, hymn number 142, verse number 3. Rig Veda, book number 2, hymn number 3, verse number 2. Rig Veda, book number 5, verse number 5, hymn number 2. Rig Veda, book number 7, hymn number 2, verse number 2. In all these places, he has been referred as Narashansa. Sanskrit word Nar means man. Shansa means Prashansa. A man who has been praised. The Arabic word Muhammad, the name of prophet. If translated into English, it means a man who has been praised. In Sanskrit, it means Narashansa. And if you read Samved, book number 2, hymn number 6, verse number 8, prophet is referred as Ahmad. Why is all this happening? Because the non-Muslims do not know that Muhammad Wasallam is their messenger also. If we go out to them to teach them, that is what the Sahaba Akram did. When anybody blasphemed against the prophet, they did not take out a rally in the roads of Medina, in the streets of Medina. What did they do? They had a dialogue with them. Man, why do you reject Muhammad Sallallahu What is wrong that he's talking of? Does he ask you to give your property to him? Does he say, construct a palace for him? What does he ask you of? He just says to you, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Worship nobody but Allah and accept that I am the messenger of Allah. That's all he says. He doesn't ask you anything else. That's what we should say. When Mr. Bush came to India, I told many Muslims, why did we took out all those rallies? Why did we waste that money? Why did we not think of pressurizing the government of Andhra Pradesh that let a Muslim delegation meet Mr. Bush to educate him what is Quran and what is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi That is what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to do. Not to pet stones on the roads, not to burn the tires of buses. I hope I answered your question, sister.